Hello everyone. So in the last post, I asked you that on what topic you would like to have a video on, and you all said virtual lab. So here I am with a virtual lab. Hi, I am Dr. Neha Patni, and today we are going to discuss about dissolved oxygen determination in a wastewater sample using Winkler's method. So obviously the aim of the experiment today is to find out that dissolved oxygen I'll represent it as DO uh, throughout the session present in the water sample using virtual lab so that is what you wanted me to explain so how virtually you can perform this experiment that is what we are going to see and it is going to be very interesting now you can see the apparatuses here are the same apparatus which you use if you perform the chemistry lab uh, in a particular laboratory setup, right? You use beaker, bottles, flask, burette, the same apparatus we are going to use but is online. So it's like virtual approach. So let us go forward to chemicals. We are going to use the similar chemicals like sodium thiosulfate, potassium dichromate, hydrochloric acid, potassium iodide starch as an indicator, magnesium sulfate, alkali iodide as a reagent and sulfuric acid. The same chemicals we are going to use here also. Now before going ahead with what, uh, how are you going to determine uh, this, I would like to tell you what is dissolved oxygen. So it's not that oxygen which you will see that O2 is the oxygen. No, it that oxygen is not bonded to any other element and that is why you call it as a non-compound oxygen. Why dissolved oxygen is that non-compound oxygen which is present in the water. So it is present in the water. Now I am not talking about this oxygen which is present in the formula because this oxygen is a compound oxygen compounded to H2. I am talking about the free oxygen which is present within water or you can imagine you know uh, these particular like if you dissolve sugar or salt in water how the molecule look like within water so that is how you can imagine the oxygen molecule within water now let us go ahead with uh, like how are you going to estimate it before that uh, let us see uh, like some of the factors which affect the DO level because if you take the sample uh, you need to know these factors otherwise your readings may vary so first of all is the temperature. I guess you remember if you increase the temperature, solubility of gas in liquid decreases, right? So you can say that the cooler uh, the water is, more oxygen is going to uh, hold. So more oxygen it will be there if the water is cooler. Similarly with pressure, we know uh, that when pressure is going to increase, uh, the DO is going to increase. So with that you can say that the water which is at lower altitude or you can say the deeper water, that will have more dissolved oxygen in it. And similarly, salinity of water is also a factor. You may uh, say that the fresh water uh, contains more of dissolved oxygen than the saline water because of the salts the oxygen does not get disposed in it so fresh water is having more of the DO level so before checking the DO level you need to check from where are you going to take the samples and uh, these factors you need to take into consideration now in the field when you collect the data na, then in that case we use polarographic DO sensor polarographic dissolved oxygen sensor while in lab it is basically Winkler method and that is a titration method and it is done by trained analyst having very good titration skill because it, it, it's very important uh, to perform the titration nicely here now the titration will include two steps and the first step is nothing but this which is nothing but standardization of your uh, particular sample which is nothing but sodium thio sulfate so we need to standardize that and for that you are going to titrate it with potassium dichromate you are going to add HCl and Ki powder to it and then you will titrate with sodium thiosulfate now here the color would be dark yellow you just have to add enough of the sodium thiosulfate so that it becomes pale yellow now the moment you observe uh, the pale yellow color in the conical flask you will add starch and starch is obviously an indicator here so it will give you a color called blue now here this is idometric titration so you need to uh, see how much liberated iodine is there so you have to titrate it with sodium thiosulfate again till the color changes to colorless and using this reaction uh, you will be able to uh, titrate the sodium thiosulfate you will be able to standardize the sodium thiosulfate now uh, let us see uh, the second step uh, before going with the virtual lab setup na, i would like you to tell uh, this particular in theory 
सो दैट वंस यू गो टू द वर्चुअल लैब ये आपके लिए बहुत ईजी हो जाएगा तो एक बार हम पहले सारा रिएक्शन देख लेते हैं थियोरी देख लेते हैं और फिर जब आप वर्चुअल में जाएंगे तो आपको ये स्टेप्स याद हो जाएंगे लेट अस स्टार्ट विथ सेकेंड स्टेप इन द सेकेंड स्टेप यू हैव टू टाइट्रेट इट विद अ वाटर सैम्पल राइट तो यू हैव टू फिल योर बॉटल विद अ वाटर सैम्पल फर्स्ट यू हैव टू एड टू एम एल ऑफ एम एन एस ओ फोर देयर एंड ऑल्सो यू हैव टू एड टू एम एल ऑफ दिस रीएजेंट नाउ लेट मी टेल यू वॉट हैपन्स विद दिस what happens with this is this is the reaction now when mnso4 is added to the water sample and the water sample contains dissolved oxygen so what that oxygen will do it will oxidize that mn2 ions to mn4 i and you will get a flocculent a precipitate kind of thing so mn4 oxide uh, hydroxide flocculent will be formed now why are we adding alkali iodide azide reagent because in presence of alkali this happens an azide reagent azide is used to suppress the interference of nitrite because if in the waste water sample nitrite is also present it will suppress this reaction so this will in, uh, affect the efficiency of the titration so for that the iodide reagent is added now what are you going to add in the water bottle you have added mnso4 you have added this reagent now you have to acidify it so for that acidifying you are going to add h2so4 to it remember that was alkali so you need to acidify it now what happens on acidifying on acidifying there are basically two roles this acid is doing the first role is that this mn4 is further reduced by this and it produce free iodine right so this the precipitate which is formed this is a flop right this flop will be dissolved back in the solution as this h plus reacts with this o2 minus and oh minus and it forms water so this precipitate gets dissolved so the first role is that the precipitate is uh, getting dissolved now what is the second role the second role is that this is going to liberate u iodine so uh, once this mns4 reacts with the iodide ion it will give you iodine and this is what you want to know liberated iodine that is proportional to the amount of oxygen present in the sample so what you are going to do now you are going to take this uh, in a conical flask and you have to start titrating with uh, sodium thiosulfate uh, remember the color was like dark yellow this time right so what are we going to do we are going to titrate this particular liberated iodine with sodium thiosulfate to the starch end point and with the help of this iodine how much iodine is liberated that sodium thiosulfate will tell you and that amount is proportional to dissolved oxygen present in the water sample and now next of the steps would be same like you have to titrate it with uh, till it becomes you know light yellow pale yellow then you add starch to it obviously the color would be blue i guess you remember and then you titrate again with sodium thiosulfate till it becomes colorless and here you have to note the reading so this is what you are going to do virtually now let us see ab uh, pura virtual lab acche se dekhna uh, otherwise aap skip kar jaoge kaafi important steps hai but before that uh, let me uh, take you to if you like uh, the video click on like and do subscribe if you are first time watching it and hit the bell icon now let us go to the virtual lab part and for that you have to type this uh, particular virtual lab winkler method in the search column when you do that you will get these links either you click on any of the link iit b or nit k you will end up in this page only this is virtual lab setup which is government of india initiative and here uh, you can see determination of dissolved oxygen in water now when you click on these things uh, one by one these will open so let us click on one of the thing and this is the paraffin where you are going to get the dissolved oxygen if you click on that it will give you the procedure entire procedure uh, see it looks like this it's a tedious job right uh, they will tell you each and every step like first second third fourth but you are not supposed to read this mai hu mai aapko pura explain karti hu ki ye kaise karna hai iski zarurat nahi padegi so let us go to the uh, like aim you know theory a little bit of theory is written if you click on theory they have given the inputs here 
right they have given the significance that minimum uh, 4 to 5 uh, mg is desirable higher value should not be there it causes corrosion and what is winkler modified method yes this azide uh, iodide is a modified method earlier it azide was not used and this is the reference now if you go to the pre test thing uh, pre test is like before proceeding with the uh, experiment you can test yourself whether you know much about it like let's say high amount of dissolved oxygen in lake indicates what let's say a better water quality let's say sample water does not contain enough microorganism i need seeding uh why is the concentrated uh, sulfuric acid added to the sample uh let's say for dissolution of precipitate i said the precipitate will form according to drinking water specification what should be the range let's say greater than this and the method used to dissolve oxygen is winkler i mean a random type kar diya let's see three out of five and now this will tell you which one has gone wrong right so to provide prevent escape of iodide ions yes so it will give you four because major role uska wahi tha ki hum iodine ke terms mein usko change kar le right and uh, like that so let us go to uh, uh, completely procedure that i have told you how it is going to look like uh, before going to simulation let us go to post test once the simulation is done uh, there is post test also given and like the way uh, we have discussed right uh, should not give color uh, Uh, with uh, let's say uh, true uh, randomly i am just uh, clicking in on, on it so that just want to save your time and let's say diffusion and aeration dissolved oxygen should be 5 and would have higher and let's see 4 out of 5 that means this one is wrong so you can uh, you know uh, try and play and like that and last one is the reference so uh, this is what the reference is now let us go to the simulation now hum dekhte hain ki virtual lab karni kaise ab aap please dhyan se dekhna और स्किप मत करना वरना आपको समझ नहीं आएगा नाउ इफ यू होवर ओवर सॉल्यूशन यूज्ड आपको यहाँ सारे सॉल्यूशंस दिखेंगे एंड डिस्क्रिप्शन इज डिजॉल्व ऑक्सीजन अमाउंट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन कंज्यूम बाय ऑर्गेनिज्म इन ब्रेकिंग डाउन द वेस्ट लेट इस गो टू स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन ऑफ सोडियम थाल्फेट सोल्यूशन द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप नाउ क्लिक ऑन इट क्लिक ऑन द फनल and funnel will go there एंड देन यू क्लिक ऑन द बॉटल नाउ इफ यू क्लिक ऑन द बॉटल इट विल नॉट ओपन यू हैव टू क्लिक ऑन द lid of the bottle right so click on the lid of the bottle now take the bottle this will help you in filling the burette with sodium thiosulfate so obviously before performing titration we have to fill the burette with sodium thiosulfate now this is done and uh, uh, this like experiment is just like the way you do in the chemistry lab now you close the lid obviously don't forget to close the lid now remove the funnel before titration we always remove the funnel now second obviously uh, you uh, if you remember you have to take 10 ml of dichromate so you just take out the lid and use the micro pipette uh, this is a bulb top you have to click to take the liquid and right you have to click to give the liquid in the conical flask release the liquid now again don't forget to put the lid so step 3 is done we have taken the conical flask 10 ml dichromate now you have to push this button of micro pipette you have to take hcl right so remove the lid take the pipette to the hcl uh, remember 2 ml hcl you have to take so you just have to put the lid back click on this and add 2 ml of hcl now hcl is done you have released 2 ml of hcl here now what you are going to see uh, you remember we have to add a spatula one is spatula of potassium iodide powder so click on it and add the potassium iodide powder so the second step like this step is done now you can see the color is dark now they'll give you some random questions so what is the normality of potassium dichromate i hope you remember 0.025 this said is correct answer so let us go ahead with the next step now you have to titrate it and Uh, आपको याद था ना डार्क कलर से पेल येलो तक जाना है और जब पेल येलो आ जाएगा तब हम स्टार्च एड करेंगे सो लेट अस ओपन द नॉब एंड लेट अस स्टार्ट एडिंग इट यू हैव टू क्लोज द नॉब व्हेन इट बिकम्स पेल येलो राइट नाउ आई थिंक इट्स पेल येलो आई पुट इट ऑफ नाउ यू एड स्टार्च टू इट सो वेन यू यू हैव टू यूज अ ड्रॉपर सो टेक द टू एम एल स्टार्च इन द ड्रॉपर एंड एड इट हेयर अब कौन सा कलर आएगा Blue. So the blue color has uh, arrived. What you have to do now? You have to 
again start the titration right and then uh, you have to close the knob when it gets to colorless right and the solution color turns what black yellow what it turns to blue let us check yes it's a correct answer now coming to the next step final burette reading you have got 10.1 what is the next step next step is always to record the reading which is 10.1 and do the calculations now if you forgot how to perform the titration uh, like reading so you can check the formula n1 v1 into v2 i hope isko explain karne ki zarurat nahi hai aapko sabko pata hai ki titration mein hum kaise calculations karte hain let us quickly uh, Uh, go to what calculation? So let us uh, let me directly calculate n one point zero two five, and you multiply it with ten, and then whatever you will get, you divide it by ten point one, and you got. Let me write here zero point zero two four seven, and let us check. It's correct. Right. So once calculation is done, now the standardization is done. The second step is to find out dissolved oxygen. Now very quickly, open the lid of the BOD bottle, and now you fill the water. Open the lid and fill the test water in the BOD sample uh, water. Now here the test sample is totally filled with the brim. Till the brim, you have to fill it. Right. Now what? Close it. Close it. They will instruct you properly. You know. Which of the following indicator is used during the titration? I hope you remember. हमने start use किया था. Correct answer. Now coming to the next step, uh, you have to add two mL of magnesium sulfate. So use a micro pipette. Take MnSO4. I hope you remember. Uh, if dissolved oxygen is present here, click on the lid. Add it. So if dissolved oxygen is present here, it is going to convert MnSO4 to to into four. and that will be a flocculent uh, precipitate here you have when you are adding it you have to make sure that the air bubble is not there because the entire estimation is based on the dissolved gas right next step is to add alkali iodide azide solution i hope you remember azide will suppress the interference of nitrite ion if present so now you have to open the lid add the solution and don't forget that you have to add it very slowly there should not be any bubble formation because that will give your reading wrong ultimately you are estimating a gas coming to the next step i hope you remember a flocculent is formed so you have to shake the bottle several times so that the precipitate is settled down at the bottom the reaction uh, takes place properly because that mn is changed to 4 hydroxide flocculent i hope you remember so you have to allow it to settle down for few minutes i hope you remember the next step is to add h2so4 to it so once the precipitate gets settled down we'll add sulfuric acid to it so open this knob use your pipette bulb and then obviously top press up arrow and that will take up the liquid open the lid and now click on the pipette you have to add sulfuric acid here i hope you remember press the down arrow button and now close the lid again you have to be very careful uh, so that no air bubble is formed coming to the next step mix the sample so mix the h2so4 properly with it so what it will do it will dissolve the precipitate and i hope you remember h2so4 ke do role the hai na ek to precipitate dissolve kar dene ka aur dusra iodine rebreed karna hai so now you have to take 200 ml of this uh, water sample in the conical flask and press the down arrow to release the water sample don't forget 200 ml so two times you have to do that right again down arrow and take so now you have to uh, titrate this sample your water is ready now again fill the funnel with sodium thiosulfate i hope you remember the step the remaining steps would be same 
the only difference is now the sample water has dissolved oxygen aur jitni oxygen hogi dissolved utna hi mn rid hone wala hai 2c4 mein change aur utna hi wo iodine liberate karne wala hai so jitna iodine hoga it will be titrated with sodium thiosulfate remove the fat and you know this virtual lab is very interesting in the sense that it is taking care of each and every step right even if you are not going to lab you will feel comfortable so now you stop the knob when it is pale yellow i hope you remember it is time to add starch use a dropper add starch you will get blue color i think now you can remember ab aapko acche se yaad ho jayega kya steps the hai na dark blue ho gaya abhi kya karna hai fir se titrate karna hai so now we'll start titrating it again until the color changes to changes to colorless right absolutely and now you stop it and just note the reading the final buret reading is 3.6 i hope you remember you have to record the observations in the observation table and now uh, if you don't remember how to solve it uh, here comes the formula uh, n1 v1 n2 v2 the similar formula is there now here you have to multiply it with equivalent weight of oxygen which is 8 and multiply by 1000 and then uh, randomly like if i write 6.65 uh, let us check they say it's wrong so let us check the result it said 2.88 and that is how you can go to the next at last they'll ask what is the acceptable range of dissolved oxygen uh, let us uh, write this and let us see yes it is correct answer they say that the acceptable limit of dissolved oxygen in water is 4 to 7 water having less than 4 mg per liter is extremely harmful to drink and here since the water uh, level is 2.88 aapne jo sample kiya usme itna kam oxygen aa raha hai so obviously it is not in the bis standard range of drinking water and that concludes the virtual lab and i hope aapko maza aaya hoga and you will be able to understand how a experiment is done in virtual lab so if you do like it uh, please hit on the like of uh, the button and do subscribe my channel and also mention in the comment what do you like and what you don't like that will help me to serve you better thank you so much this is dr neha patel thank you